Okay, cool. So, yeah, we're good. So, welcome back. We are now streaming the Barry Applestein versus Matt Scott uh, top four game. Uh, it is Old Allies versus TTO. A classic matchup? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not as good as the WAP versus Invasion I played yesterday, but, you know, <laughs> let's run with this. So, um, Yeah, uh, Barry was able to get past Tom in round yeah. one. And now, they were playing the same matchup, but that was game two after Barry had won game one by 31. So... Right. Well, the, the decks are a little different. Yeah. Uh, Tom Hay was doing uh, Fombas. Yes. And... Um, oh, someone should tell Matt that he's got some of his cards in the X. I'll go do that. Okay. Yeah. Tell him X does not mark the spot to put your cards. Um, so, yeah, it looks like, um, uh, you know, Barry and Matt are on their way. Barry, like like uh, Justin was saying, had already won this match, but it, it was a little bit different. Um, Matt's light side, I should know, since we just played. Um, he has a, he's is more, you know, the traditional old allies with, yeah, with, uh, double keeping the eyes open and things of that nature. So, um, I don't know if Barry's playing any starship weapons or anything in his. He is. Um, so Barry has, uh, both high cannons. Okay. He has the, the one for Scythe one and then the one for Saber one. So. And Scythe one is the one that does it during move. Move, yeah. So, uh, Matt's going to be looking to get his uh, keeping the eyes open yeah. in his hands real quick or keep your eyes open in his hands real quick just to stop some of that stuff. Yeah, I mean, I know one of my one of my, my Colorado teammates likes to play, play, likes to play a bunch of decks trying to shoot down the Falcon on purpose because it just irked him so much that it was so hard to do and yeah, you can't really do it. Uh, like, no, I if, mean, particularly if particularly if um, if Lightside is aware that that's what you're trying to do, right? Then they can set up a stack that has a, like a defense nine Falcon in space, right? And you just you you're not gonna you're, you're not you're not gonna get there. No. Um, even like even 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 Saber one tracking a seven will miss. So <laughs> that's uh right. Like, <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you can get them to use their destiny or the destiny reduction elsewhere, then maybe. But yeah. doubtful, doubtful that Matt's gonna fall for that trick in the top four. Yeah. Um, so, so shooting down the Falcon while it, there's an outside chance that it, that it's doable is a very challenging proposition. Right. So, I he, think more likely we're more likely setting up some sort of drain race is probably the better. Right. Well, and it also depends if Matt tries to do or he does the um the super loaded falcon to actually increase the maneuver he right did not do that obviously against me because he didn't worry about it but right i mean and that to do that turn one or super early could be you know you have to kind of get a little bit lucky but uh, i mean a little bit so one of the i mean one of the things with with oa is that you can with a brave resistance pretty much set it up however you want right right um so, you you set it up however you want, but um, you kind of do take, you know, you 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 have to use that brave resistance, and you kind of if you have to push back, you know, general Leia, you kind of take a hit in your ground at that point a yeah. little bit, and it's not like you need ground that much, but you do want to get your objective flipped and get the drains going to actually race yeah. TTO at that point. Yeah, and I, and Barry's deck is not completely. Um, completely nothing on the ground like right. some ttos are so so it's not complete it's not totally safe to like oh we'll just put like right uh, like Lor santeca and rose here together that'll be power two that's good enough like that's, right, right that's probably not good enough actually like yeah, not, yeah not to be completely safe so yeah and uh i know matt's playing I, he's only got the falcon and uh what is it blue two Blue five, whatever it uh, is he has blue 11, 11 actually no i'm sorry it's the strip that can be a vehicle um, or, or no, I guess it's just a vehicle, isn't it? Yeah, there's no ships that can be a vehicle except for the Falcon. Well, Rogue One can go down there, can it? Uh, it can, but it, it is power zero there. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> so, so I guess any starfighter can. Yeah, yeah. That, but. Um, so yeah, he's got that, but most of, I think he's got Leia's transport and a Corvette for the Radis pool that you'll do. Yeah, that's pretty reasonable. Um, okay, so he puts Leia back to get Admiral U.S. Satura. That is part one of the plan. Yep. Um, you Satura adding to defense value of uh, um, 
episode seven starships and vehicles starships and characters not vehicles it's very important um so yeah your ideal stack on the falcon in this in this matchup would probably be general calrissian and poe piloting with solo and uh admiral satura as passengers right that would be your best and it doesn't look like barry got his sector one pool so uh, that's not good i mean it, it I, I assume he pulled a sector. I can't see. Yeah, I mean, he gets to pull a sector certainly, but yeah, not right. having played it would certainly suggest that he didn't. Yeah, he didn't play it, so he didn't get the first one. So hopefully, it was either in the cards he drew or what he uh, put back, so he can get it out next turn. Yeah, he'll certainly be able to get it out. But next if turn, he activated, it. he activated, it. He, he drew everything. Right, right. So. so and if he and if he drew it, then he can potentially get all three out next turn and yeah. have it ready to go. Yeah, and you know, get going immediately on it, and that would be a huge start for him to yeah. start causing some damage really quick, or yeah. at least or at least move, you know, the Death Star 2 over to Jakku to start adding Battle Destinies and things of that nature. Yeah. Now, I almost wonder about this. I haven't played the early turns of the OA against TTO very much. <laughs> I don't think many I, people have. <laughs> I, I kind of wonder if the safer thing to do is not to just leave the Falcon on the ground. Yeah, I mean... So, and my, my thought there is that regardless of how much or how little ground TTO has, they're not especially likely to be able to crack the Falcon on the ground here. Like, here they'd be up against two Destinies and you're still Defense 6, and, you know, worst case, you can forfeit the characters. Right. Um... Like they're probably like it'd be it'd be weird for them to be playing like P fifty nine like that level of right. Ooh, he lost the he lost the keep your eyes open. Too. Well, he also locked the huge X out of nowhere combo, which is mm, probably going to yeah. be somewhat relevant here. Yeah, that's probably also a big one. Although actually, losing the keep your eyes open is like kind of okay because right, right, find solo. And then, yeah. Right, right, right. Now you have a free play of it, but um, yeah, he needs to get to the system at some point to flip. But I think what you maybe want to do is to go to the system when you flip. Um, and the reason is, as I said, like once you're fully set up, Saber One can't shoot you down. But in this spot, Saber One could shoot you down. Well, and what Barry could do here is he could deploy if he has his ground, which it, I don't think he does because he put a a passenger on Slave he One. He put Moff Jarad there. He still didn't play his sectors. Uh, so I guess he didn't play Moff Jarad turn one, so... Oh, well, that's a good reason. Yeah, <laughs> so he just, I just saw him pull a sector this turn, so yeah. he must, he, like, I could barely see it, but now I, it's obvious that it's Jarad sitting there. Yeah, it was Ozil, I think, and yeah, Boba, Boba Fett, Fett. So what, what Barry could have done, and, you know, I think this would have been the turn to do it, is if he had gone and dropped some ground and moved over, and then he would kind of help prevent the flip. Yeah. Like... I, I think he's playing to keep his slave one protected, which is reasonable. But if he had any sort of his ground package in, he could have, you know, moved over and then, you know, he because you have to either control the system or occupy the system and control two battleground sites. Yeah, I mean, it looks though like um, like Matt pulled, Matt didn't have the raise encampment, so he pulled the second battleground. Right. So he'd be able to pull a third battleground potentially here and occupy the other two and. Yeah, that's what we were saying. It's yeah, yeah. Um, although Barry did beat Tom's OA. Well, that's but that's it was Tom game two. To, it was game Tom, two, and Tom. Yeah, because yeah. Tom had to win by thirty-two. Oh, so. I didn't know it was that bad. <laughs> yeah, no. Tom, Tom, oh, then yeah, yeah. That's yeah, Tom lost rough. game one by thirty-one. So even though OA TTO is a good matchup, is not uh, is not that good. I don't think. Would you like to join in? Okay. Um, so yeah. Um, I think Matt's in a good spot here to control this game, especially since Barry's got zero sectors on the table. And yeah, yeah, he didn't play Jezra turn one, and then didn't have the turn the, uh, not yet. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what we were. Yeah, we. So like, we uh, he lost the keeper eyes. I was like, oh, that's not great. Oh, but he can just pull solo now. With right. Great resistance. And... Right. Yeah, he could. You know, he's got that in. Uh, yeah, and he's got um, Hujix out of nowhere in the Lost Pile too, which is not bad with Solo to be able, because especially when you're going to be battling in the space. So those are actually two really good <laughs> top decks. <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, I, I definitely think Matt's going to get a big win here and put Barry on the defensive for the round two. And... Well, okay, so he picked up General Lay, I believe, with strike planning. Yeah. This is the second strike planning pull? Yeah. Did he use it the first turn? Um, I think he used strike planning to pull Leia the first turn, okay. and then used Leia to use Brave Resistance to get something else, and then pull Leia again. Okay, so he had Leia in his opener. Okay. No, I, I think he he used strike planning once to get her, and then oh, and then put her back. It, and yeah. Then, okay. Sure. 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 Um. But yeah. Uh. Looks like. You know, they're, they're just doing their normal setup, taking it easy. I mean, Matt's not really in any hurry here. Um, it looks like he's using Leia to pull another Brave Resistance character. Yeah, I mean, this is a matchup where, like, you can safely, like, pull Ray with Ray's encampment and move her over and have her sit by herself. That's right. fine. Pulls Rose. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I would imagine that would just, like, Rose to one, pull Ray and move Ray over, flip, move Rose over. I mean, even that can be dangerous. I don't know what Barry's ground is, but I mean, if it's he like, can... Lord, it's an APP Lord Maul, I think. I mean, if he has anything to hit Ray and then Clash her or something, that could... Uh, I mean, it's an APP Lord Maul because he has a small Sith Infiltrator, I think. So, like, he can kind of flex yeah. and do both. I don't think it's a dedicated... It's not like some of the TTOs I've seen that have, like, a Doctor E combo and, like, two APP Mauls, and, like, we're, we're going to actually go after you on the ground. Yeah, uh, no, I was thinking he might have... You know, like a uh, clash or something, or, and you know, something just to kill that ray, like you sure. know, sniper, dark strike. Sure, sure. And then, you know, he could get seven power versus and a destiny versus Rose by herself, yeah. which would be kind of rough. Uh, so he played uh, U.S. Satura. Yep. It doesn't look like he left enough force to actually. No, oh, no, nope. he just had it yep. all stacked very nicely. Yeah, he does that. It's hard to see. <laughs> I'm it's different on camera. Yeah. When I'm sitting at the table, I can tell that there's some stuff in the stack. All right, so he. Well, yeah, he d- he doesn't know how to play on stream like I do, where you keep your force pile spread out and <laughs> let him see, give an idea of how many that's actually there. Yeah. So, I think he's probably. I mean, it it would be risky to do your play here and not leave any force as well. Uh, he. He would be basically giving the finger to Barry's ground game at this point. But... I mean, I think it would be a it would be a truly bizarre TTO that would that would have a heavy ground game. He is respecting it though, though, because like a Ray by herself, I think it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's you know, Lord well, Maul can make it to where it's a little rough. Like you might get a little bit of overflow. I mean, but OA though can run like can run handle you know you can right and i mean he may have a second copy of keep your eyes open in his hand too and he feels comfortable with yeah. that play yeah i wouldn't be surprised for oa to be running multiple keep your eyes open well i know he's running too oh, well. <laughs> i mean you have his first round opponent here so <laughs> Fair I, I i at least know his deck list inside and out um i know what barry was trying to do since i worked with him last night uh, he did not want to play this again today. Yeah, he wanted to play something else, but he had to change to it. So, I mean, he won all round with it, certainly. So, yeah. What did we lose? A tracking and a Beaumont can, I believe. Yep. That's not too bad. Well, there's two okay. sectors. He's been a little unlucky not to be able to open, you know, draw into a, a sector at this point as well. Because he's drawn a fair number of cards. Yeah. So. I mean, maybe maybe Barry's content just to try to, you know, keep paying to drain at indoor and re- trying to reduce the loss that he has to play against for next round. Yeah. That might be what he's trying to do here. Um, if he's, if he's hoping to be able to beat. Matt's dark side deck by significant yeah, amount. I don't know if he knows what Matt's dark side deck is, so Yeah, I don't either. I did not talk to him about it, so Yeah. I have no idea if he knows what Matt's playing and I don't remember what Barry said he was playing for I mean, light. I mean we know that the mirror we, we know that the flip side matchup is gonna be uh Y four against Oh C C T. Which 
that can be rough for CCT. And Matt can get himself into some serious trouble, but Matt also played Y4 the day before yeah, so to get here. Yeah, he's got an idea of what, of what well, and the plan is. And... We all figured out. See, here the, the bigger problem is also me, Barry, and Fred, and Matt Scott all figured out that matchup together. So it's going to be hard for Matt to just walk into a uh, bad time. Yeah. Yeah, that was actually when uh, Barry's result against uh, Tom Hade came down. <coughs> we uh, we didn't know yet what Tom was playing, and we heard that Barry won by thirty one. It's like Tom must have changed decks because it it like I don't think CCT would have lost by twenty by thirty one. That's yeah. Apparently he. Uh... But bring him before me could certainly lose to Y four by a huge amount. So yeah, he apparently walked into some bad bad aspects of it and. Barry took advantage. Yep. So, I don't... I assume Barry hasn't done anything else other than Drain, so he's... No, he checked his deck there with something. Probably Indoor Shield or something. Uh, well, he gave a, a verify, so I kind of assume it was objective. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um... Yeah, he's going to go get Vader. Vader ship. Barry does have one really kind of cool card in his deck. Uh, so the Lord Maul and the Vader are two pieces of the combo to play Taco Bill's virtual card. Yes, and I did see that card in the deck. <laughs> I know for 100% fact that's in the deck. Yeah, uh, I mean, I deck checked Barry. I also know the, <laughs> the deck. Yeah. Um, so that could be huge played at the right time, um, and force you know Matt into something else. And I don't know if Matt knows that it's in there. Yeah, it's the yep. the always two there are. Yep, that is the one. Yep. He. All right, so Looks we're like... on Matt's turn. He's satisfied battle plan, so he's got uh, three drain here to do. Right. Um, and the awkward part about TTO facing fast damage is that you like you usually have to lose from your hand until you're set up. Right. Because if you lose a sector or a TTO, then, then the game's just over. <laughs> right. You can't possibly win from there. Well, we say that, but that did happen, and the 2017 worlds oh, okay so that shows <laughs> yeah um, our our great co our, our great uh floor judge today phil Ason won like that so <laughs> yeah uh yeah i mean uh, well but that's certainly not what you want to do <laughs> no no that's that's not plan a um, yeah, so like you lose from your hand if you cannot all afford to do so. Right. Well, or if you know, or if you know that the missing pieces were are like in the bottom. Well, there goes always two there. Yeah. Uh, we 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 had hopes, but. And. Uh, I mean, you can also <laughs> lose off the top if it's the last damage you're gonna take, and you've got no escape as well. Sure. Sure. And that's I just realized always two there are works on any destiny, so you can use it on their attempt to blow up the the death star two with you. Yeah, yeah, that's why it was in there. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's to that's good to redo the uh, you know the blowing up in case they try to do that to get the win, or you know maybe it's like another uh, another. Uh, uh, like kind of half limited resources damage or sure. you know things of that nature. Yeah. And you know he does put Vader in space and he does have the Lord Maul in space with ship if he needs to or he can even drop to the ground. All right, so we're we got the uh, the last Chaku site out here the yep. two two one. I have to imagine that he's gonna flip here. Which yeah. Is, and then he's he, kind of insane if he didn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, there's the rose to flip. Uh, so, he's only going to be facing a drain of one next turn, which probably means the bear is not going to pay for it, because there's not a whole lot of reason to do that. Right. Unless Barry's literally just playing to... Sure, <laughs> unless he just has actual nothing else to do. Right. I guess, may as well. Uh, yeah, because... Dash, uh, dash in Rogue 12. Yep. 
I'm not 100% sure what Barry's plan here was. He, I think it was just lose and move on. <laughs> That's so. not a great plan. No, um, I hope he came up with a backup plan, but... Uh, if plan A is lose, you should really you should really consider coming up with a plan B. <laughs> it's it's kind of like my retirement plan of jail or death, <laughs> since we won't have anything there. But yeah, um, as opposed to the uh, as opposed to the plan of uh, actually, apocalypse in the world burns. <laughs> like, oh, well, I guess that's plan C. <laughs> it, it's it's all instead of actually retiring with actually retirement and you know house <laughs> benefits, and good things. Yeah. And Matt, by the way, Matt is playing a ton of ground in here, so oh, he's yeah. going to be able to doom stack and just kind of sit. I mean, OA pretty commonly has a fair number of characters, although they're kind of middling characters against the deck that can actually attack you in the ground. Right. Against TTO, they're they're probably enough. Like, right. Like Lor Santeca at the Two Little Village is right. probably fine. Like. Yeah, and you know they he's going to be able to easily at least hold the two um, two and drain for two and two. I don't know what that card is. That foil card is it a fin? Oh, is it the AI fin? I think it's the AI fin because okay, that's cool. Fred has all the AIs in here and yeah, the, it does throw you off because it's not the the AI, the the AI fin I like a lot. Um. Well, you got his third sector. Yep. So that means he's probably going to activate this thing as operational. He's going to activate TTO this turn. Yeah. So he won't be able to pull that. Yeah. <laughs> and he'll get a nice turn five or turn six TTO set up and feel great about his day. Um, oh, it could be Chewy. Um, I think the AI Chewy is lighter in the artwork. Yeah, I would go pull up all the list of AIs. Yeah, I was but... gonna say, I suppose we'll find out when a battle happens there, but we actually we probably probably <coughs> won't. So. Well, I mean, I think it's a fin though because I don't think he spent the five force that we needed for Chewy. Yeah. I'd... And putting fin there makes a lot of sense because it's with Rose, so. Right. And so he can forfeit them used yeah. and re-get them. Is it dual icon? No. Oh. Uh, well, then it's probably Chewy. Yeah, it definitely does wrong. have dual icon. All right, well, um, I must be wrong then. I'm sitting really far back from the little stream thing, so if you, you guys have, may have a better look at it. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really leaning in here, so... He did spend five? Okay. I mean, I just, I don't see anything on Chewy there. It looks like it's been... Oh, you know what it is? I think it's also signed. Um, sure. I think somebody signed it. B-Fred loves to have a signed card, so... Sure. Yeah. B Fred's cards are no longer allowed to be on camera. <laughs> so yeah. I mean he's he's right, set well, up to a, Yeah, that's a that's a pretty pretty tough site to attack now then. Well Barry hasn't just dropped the sector in TTO, so I'm sure he probably activated TTO. C I Joe with Podcaster. Okay, yeah, yeah. Seems about right. Oh, you might be thinking about paying a drain. And taking just yeah, having just, a drain yeah. one. I mean, it is like it is match play, so right. It's not okay. crazy nope. to do that. He did not drain. He just went straight there. Oh, oh yeah, he had it. Had them both in hand. How lucky for him! Oh wait. <laughs> All right, so we have a fully armed and operational death star. And there is the Maul Sith Infiltrator with Lord Maul. Yep. Um, I don't know if that's great, though. I mean, he could move something over from Endor if he needs to. Yeah. I mean, he's going to move Death Star over. I mean, he could certainly just move the Death Star over and, like, cloak, and then he's taking the two damage either way. Right. Um, but then he at least gets to do his TTO or um, he gets to at least do his TTO damage that way. Right. I mean, that's usually the plan against a stacked up space is to just... Uh, uh, or, no. yeah. or we're going to do this. Yeah. <laughs> or it's, you're going to run away. One. Oh, and he's using the nice new hyper, dri hyper drive oh, chart. <laughs> That's that's nice. Nice yeah. use of game aids that you get at Worlds, so 
the new hyper navigation chart. Yeah. I did. I did like the discussion in the chat that uh, in the in the Slack chat that it's a shame that Exegol didn't go to uh, didn't go to eleven. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris Kelly does confirm that it's AI. If anybody's going to know, it should be our design advocate. But you know, he might make a mistake. He. He does do that from time to time. See, I don't know, man. Like, I'm on playtesting, and I often am just like, I don't remember what this card does. <laughs> it did three different things when we were playtesting it, so. Oh, yeah. If this is the list that we were playtesting, you should have, like, double enter the bureaucrat, too, which does nothing against OA. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, with Beaumont Ken gone, then no, it's not going to be doing anything. Right. All right, so retrieve with Rose. We're going to drain for three on the ground. It's more of a mains card, but... I switch draw with Ray first. That makes sense. Oh. It's either order is kind of fine, but... Well, usually, if you... Uh, I mean, with Ray, it doesn't matter as much, but usually you want to cause your damage and then take your draw so you, you have more information to go on. Um, right. Yeah, since he's not paying. Right. Yeah. Especially since he's not paying. If he was paying, then that yep. does change things. But yeah, if he was paying, I think you probably draw first so that you have a better idea of what you want to do on your turn. Right. But, right. But. So. I mean, it, it honestly just looks like just Matt's just toying with him. <laughs> Although, you know, Barry could land some ships and. You know, drop some guy. You know, drop some Jedi in front of guys with some forfeit fodder too. <laughs> but there's BB-8 on top for yep. more for extra more damage. damage. Yeah. Yeah, like BB-8 and Rose. Like it, it's really annoying that they don't even have to control the site for those effects <laughs> to go off. Like Rose is kind of understated, understood because. She's basically the opposite of Luke in space, but like most force point point or most damage requires you to control the site. Oh, he drops Jin to the bunker. Ooh. That yeah, that Jin for when it happened to me yesterday, the AI won. I thought they were playing Kylo Ren on me, and I was going, "Wait, what?" <laughs> the Y and everything threw me off. There's like three different promo like special like f special finished Jins, so I'm like. Well, but I don't want to play multiple gens in my deck. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I also wanted to let Chris Kelly know since he's watching that uh, he gets an AI Darth Vader from me for my top eight. Oh. I figured he would put that to more use than me, so <laughs> it will be sh sent back to him with his deck box that he shipped me for this weekend. Oh, and for people that... I don't know if you guys mentioned it yesterday since I wasn't really allowed to watch and play. What's this shaking? Oh, that you're not getting the AI? Yeah, well, Chris Kelly... Oh, it's the... No, I thought it said AI on there, but... Is it a foil one? Yeah, it's foil. It's in my deck box. No, it doesn't. It says Chris Kelly. Oh, okay, yeah, Chris, I'll sign it for you. Um, the, uh, the, uh, so what I was going to say yes, is yesterday, I don't know if you said it, I, probably not, but if you did, uh, one of the other cool prizes that we're going to be doing from now on is the, they've come up with some really cool dual deck boxes that will hold double sleeve cards and it will hold, um, you know, sleeves, double sleeve cards, and it has lots of room. It's a really great box and we had a beta test version of it. I don't know if you guys showed it since it was for the volunteers, but I don't, I don't know if we showed it because I was playing. Multi, so I don't oh yeah, yeah. Come on the stream. Fair enough. But yeah, it was it was shown for it was given to the volunteers as a beta test for this weekend, and it's really nice. Um, so everybody come out to events and look for this awesome prize support. And I guess also looks like uh, Matt has completely flipped Barry off with respect to his ground by dropping. Hera by herself over there. Yeah. I mean, with Lord, with Maul in space, it's... Oh, Dan just threw me the deck box, so I don't know if you guys can see, but that's the image of it. Uh, I think it might be upside down. Oh, no, it goes like this. Yeah. And Those then... really cool. I saw that Jared and Paul it's got, had one. It's got some of the uh, Players Committee stuff, and 
the lid, I mean, if you just based on the lid, you guys can see kind of how deep it is. It's like putting a card in here. I'll show you. I mean, this is this is what a card is all the way at the bottom. I don't know if I can. Like, it's it's lots of room. You know, you can actually put the card almost top up in the sleeve, and it actually fits in there. So, it's it's a really nice box. But yeah, look for those coming. Um, yeah, it, w once we get into all the shields, OTSD boxes didn't work anymore. So it's nice the yeah. the PC's trying to find some prize support. Uh, yeah, and I know there are good boxes. Like I know, like I've got one of the double, one well, like the double flip ones. Like, like there yeah. are there are good boxes out there certainly, but it's nice to have actual like affiliated ones. Right. Like yeah, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah, I mean I've got that ultimate guard. Yeah, that, that one. That yeah. flip tray where it's got it's got enough room for the two 100 card deck boxes, but. Yeah, but even that's like I've found it's like kind of a tight fit with, with right. all the shields and everything in the in the one in in, in each slot. So. Right. Yeah, and you know Matt moved away. Uh, yep. Barry Flash Saber one, Baron's not in there. Okay. Which is you know pretty common once you get to this point. Trying to match ships and pilots is a lot harder to do. Yeah, unless I you mean, can track them around. It is good information for Matt to know that there's huh? a Saber one. <laughs> um. It's good information for Matt to have that there's a saber one in hand, though. So yeah. What was it? <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, you know, he knows what one of the cards is, and that's always useful information. Well, uh, no, knowing particularly about that card. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, he's not gonna shoot anything down. He just knows that there's more ships, and oh yeah, he he moved. Saber or Slave One, Vader and Lord Maul and ship all the way over there. Yeah, it's, yeah, he's doing. And and he's yeah. moved over to and one more on the ground at the bunker and he's has the Ender system. So. Yeah, thank you, thank you for the congratulations yeah, and you. everything to the chat. I mean, it was yeah. a bummer to go five zero and then lose three three straights, but here we thank are. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I mean. You know, I, I never thought I would be making a top eight or anything, so uh, it was nice to be able to do it with WAP, which people just kept crapping on when I was trying to get people to help me test it and sh bounce ideas off them. They're like, you can't play WAP, it's bad. I'm like, but I want to play WAP. See, I wish I'd played against one more Jedi Luke deck and one less Light Side Space deck. Yes. Cause, uh... <laughs> I think a lot of people did. Uh I mean, I turned I turned Luke twice yesterday, and turning him a third time probably would have been another win. So you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I I remember like the weekend before I was literally going, "How about this Y four ops list? It looks pretty good in this meta <laughs> that is coming here." Uh, and uh, you know, it it just was it, and yeah, he lands to block a drain of two, which makes sense. Yep. Um. Um, it doesn't get out. I, I assume, assume hopefully. I, ass I assume that they will that they will stipulate that he got out. Otherwise, this is going to be a rough battle. Yeah, like, I mean, I know OA's guys aren't like power five or anything, but a bunch of power one guys. I mean, gets power the dash, zero. The dash ship though, actually, the dash in, in Rogue One actually adds a bit. Like that's like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a power thirteen stack. Like, right, right, yeah, yeah. It's not like it's garbage, but like. Well, also, if Maul doesn't get out, he doesn't draw Destiny. So. <laughs> True. Like, yeah, yeah. That's, that's just that's pretty bad. Yeah, it's like here's here's seven plus yeah. I think it's six. Hey, here, so here's thirteen like here's, here's, forfeit. Yeah, here's, yeah, thirteen forfeit to so. cover. That's fine. That covers your thirteen power. We're good, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. That's the AI solo that he lost. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, Matt's firmly in control of this. I I suspect Barry's probably around like sixteen ish in life force with a few in hand. Um, Matt's probably in the good twenties range right now with all the cards. I mean, Matt's got a ton of cards in his hand, so yeah. he's gonna. And both these decks kind of put a lot of cards on the table, right? But... And so hopefully, you know, Barry can keep the diff down a little bit to. Now it, it's uh, Vader and Tarkin, I believe, right in the in the Vader shuttle. That's what uh, it looks like. Okay, he retrieved the solo. Yeah, probably. I mean, it could also be DS sixty one dash five. That's in the deck as well, but I'm not a hundred percent sure what he did. 
it's hard to see. I wish we had a little bit more zoomed in on the camera at this Did point. Did we see a lot of Maul over the weekend? So, um, I know Batmas was playing a Maul Adathomir SRV, or Adathomir SS, uh, SSAV. Right, he Sorry. played... So he had Maul. Uh, I know Garrett played Shadow Collective. Oh, and okay. Um, Garrett played Shadow Collective. Um, I know um, Ryan Jellison was playing... Um, Outer Rim Scout ISB that had them all in it. Okay. So. Yeah, there was a few. I mean, he's he's kind of becoming a splashable card in some aspects. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it just comes down to if you will consistently have a non-battleground that you want right. to put him at. That's like... And, you know, what's interesting with it, and this is one of the things I really in, I liked about the Y4 Ops deck, was you could do... Uh, you had a third flex starting slot, so you could do four luck start against a lot of that. Yep. And... Now you're starting to piece cards together a little bit better, um, and it makes it makes things a little, you know pretty huge. Yeah, yeah, I mean Matt's just dropping guys at this point to just try to increase the damage as quickly as possible. Yeah. And if he if he flees uh, indoor here too, he can rebel princess back a card to cancel the drain in space. I believe. I think it's that same location. Yeah, I mean he doesn't have a so. good. There's not really a good. Fl- I, I think rebel. I f- I think Rebel Princess only cancels at related sites. I thought it was at related locations. Yeah. If she works in space to Oh, that's right. Sites, that's what it is. Yeah, that, but not there the we other go. way. So, I mean, he'll still get a drain of one in. Um, But, I mean, he's still got it. I mean, Barry's still got a stack there. And if he managed to find Baron to go with the Slave 1, like, you know, Matt can't just move back, um, you know, Falcon and feel all that comfortable. I mean, well, so one thing is uh, Satura, who we were talking about as a defense booster, is an admiral, so leadership would apply uh, in space. That's true. Um, so that's uh, that's certainly a significant consideration, and one of the reasons that we liked that that I know um, the Sai and I, when we were talking, when we had to work together for Nationals, really liked putting uh, Satura in space, particularly with Poe against decks like this. Right. Where they're like, well, we'll just draw multiple decks against you. It's like, well, sure, I guess, but that's not going to. I mean, he probably has a spin. He probably has a short range. Um, right. And, you know, Saber 1 has some decent maneuver. Yeah. And I know, I know Barry's list was at one point running a dark maneuver, so that could be yeah. something. Um, we got an Anakin. Well, that oh, hope. so I think we're just battling this turn, aren't we? Yeah, it looks like it, maybe. Um, planning to forfeit Anakin would be my guess. Well, I mean, you could also forfeit General Cal. I mean, I think you want to keep General Cal because of the likelihood of weapons out of TTO. Also, he gave a verify, so it seems like there's oh, a no, good no. chance that he saw yeah, the yeah. second one. And that kind of oh, thing. I know. I'm just saying, like, with with uh, Barry's life force, unless he's pieced it together in his hand already... It, it might be something. But, yeah, I mean, you could also easily just forfeit Anakin. He forfeits for seven. That's or so eight. Eight? Yeah, yeah. Eight. Something stupid. Yeah, so Satura's not going to add a Destiny here because he only adds a Destiny at uh, Episode 7 locations. Uh, but Poe still adds one, so we're still looking at two Destinies, two Destinies. drawn at plus one each. Right. Um, which uh, will and almost certainly be enough to crack. But if... If what they're saying with Barry having an admiral there too, he could also command. Yeah, yeah. So he could command back also. Right, and we could just be sitting there staring at the th- sky against each other. Um. Oh yeah, I'm sure the deck list will be up pretty quick here. Uh, so, uh, there were a couple of them that were like, that were, or actually I guess maybe it's just Barry's that were handwritten, so they might be. They'll, they might take a little bit longer to get put up, but they'll get put up pretty fast. Yeah, Barry did handwrite his. Apparently, making decks on your phone on GIMP is not something you wanted to do. No, no. I did. I did the recommendation, which was build your decks on GIMP and then do the copy into the email. And there's the Imperial Command. Yep. To limit. Uh, which is grabbed, which makes sense. Right. Okay. And I assume with... Yeah. I was going to say, I assume with... Uh, he's got a leadership as well to... <laughs> Matt's big back. hand, he had the leadership. Barry does have the spin in his hand. It does not like does not look like Barry has the Saber 1 combo in his hand, though. Looks like he just has Saber 1, but no gun. So even if he did find no, Baron... Even if he did find Baron, it, 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 I mean, it would be good, but not, right. not fantastic. Right. All right, so they're both going to draw. Well, Barry's going to probably spin. That is a... Rebel Flight Suit? Is it a Proton Torpedoes? Oh, it could be. 
could be that. That'd be interesting. So he spins for a six, I believe. Uh, and then draws a... I can't tell what that is. I don't either. They both... Yeah, Rebel Flight 2B. I got a card right. <laughs> Look at that. So, and they both subtract two from each other's other destiny. So Barry, Barry definitely has the advantage there. Um... Oh, I think Barry might be seeing if he can redraw the destiny after he subtracts two, which he should be uh, able to. Yes, you actually, yeah, you can do that. But, because there's, there's three, I think there's well, well, three. Well, I don't know what the second destiny was. I think it was like a four, maybe? Yeah, but it, if OA reduces it to a two. Yeah, yeah, no, it was a four, so if it's reduced to a two, then there's three Imperials and he can redraw it. Right. Yeah. That would not be good. No. No, he just lose Calrissian. All right. I mean, it's possible that he just has to keep your eyes up, and that's fine. Right? Like, yeah, yeah. I, well, oh, yeah, he already lost solo. I was going to say, he had to keep one in the lost he, pile. He did but, retrieve the solo, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, I meant he lost it, and so it wasn't actually in play, oh, so yeah, he, yeah, could, yeah, he yeah. couldn't use that text. That text is so big all weekend for me. The solo? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I played two in WAP, and it was fantastic. Yep, and as expected. See ya. Flee. So now Barry's draining for two at indoor, and now I wonder, and I don't know if this works, but I wonder if Barry might have cloaked Maul and moved him down. Oh. And so that might be why he left Maul in his ship. Sure. So that way he couldn't be battled. He's okay. still losing the two there, okay. but now he's got... Right. Battle. Now, now he's testing battle plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, and all apparently right. that's what he did. So that makes a lot more sense. So yes. he's he's saving the two, but now he satisfies battle order and gets a drain of two for free, which will be reduced to a one. Now or I don't think should be that three damage. Worked, I don't think that'll work now. It worked that time, but I right. Yeah, you can't do it every turn. Right, right. No, and apparently that was the they were discussing the situation. Barry might have. Yeah. Missed that he could redraw it and then realized it later, and he just didn't want to take it back or yeah. something. That's fair. Um, which mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, if you if you make a mistake, you yeah. should own it and yeah. accept it. If they don't want to let you take it back, so be it. Um, you know, I always when I play, I'm always like, you know, if you if I make a mistake and you say you can take it back, cool. If you don't say that to me, I won't ask. Unless you know something big, then I'll at least ask <laughs> i did ask once yesterday but most of the time i just accept the thing and deal with it and see what happens it look, does look like matt still has a decent amount there it, oh he's playing shields these are the scent shields yeah yeah i mean it looks like he still probably has about 18 ish left i mean he's got a massive hand No saver ones. Yeah, I'd agree. That's the difficult part about the matching, the matching ships thing is you gotta getting them together early is a lot easier. Getting them together late is a lot harder. Yeah. Well, that that's useful. What is that? Uh, image. Oh, okay. Yeah. I wonder if Matt's list. I assume not. Um, I'll say, I wonder if Matt's list is as prepared for like ISB and stuff as as we were at NAS, because there was like, we had Saw. Right. I don't think he was playing Saw. I, d I did not see Saw. Yeah. I mean, Saw, uh, Saw Guerrero is definitely like, is definitely a, uh, a semi situational card. Right. So Barry moves back up with Maul since he can't cloak and land. And it, I I I saw him looking at moving the shuttle down against Leia over there to block that drain. He could do that, and then he could move somebody over to block Jen's drain as well if he really wanted to. Um, but he's still oh, gonna he take. Lost the, early. Okay. Well, he he could lose two. And then he's only losing three next turn, which isn't terrible. Uh, but it looks like he's just gonna draw and accept losing. Five. 
Uh, now, situationally, this wouldn't fully apply in exactly the spot that we're in, um, but MHT did this against me in an OCS game. Um, you can, if it gets very, very close, cancel your own drains with Leia. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, if it's very, very close, doing one damage to them and retrieving one is not oh. super different, but... Um, it definitely does not look like Matt has a lot left, so Barry might have been able to keep this... I don't know, yeah, Barry. to keep this quite close. Yeah. Oh, he Tarkin's ordered. <laughs> Useful. I might have saved it. Oh, Tarkin's orders control, though, so never mind. Yeah, so he Tarkin's order for one. Uh, looks like in Jared and Joe's game, both have about 20, 25 force. Joe has a larger head, but Jared has a better board state. That's usually how that goes if you're equal in force. <laughs> the guy with the larger hand does not have a good board state. Well, there goes the Supermark laser. That, that could have been useful last turn if he had had that. Well, the, that laser only shoots capitals. So. Oh. Stupid Death Star 2. <laughs> it shoots them really well. Yeah, yeah. I know, I, I had home one. <laughs> <laughs> that's not like the movies I mean the other the other Mon Cal ships got shot down yeah yeah but it wasn't home one Akbar does not die from it well that's just cause that, that, that that's cause the desk, that's cause uh, Mosh Gerard made bad tactical decisions should have definitely shot home, home one first oh yeah 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 that's how they won the battle at the Scarif they shot down the one with the leader on it. Yeah. Uh, 3PO. Okay. Matt's going to probably try to set up some word doomed here, too, to help further reduce the loss. I wonder if he might be under the 15 for it right now. And, you know, Barry can get some damage in. Like, one. If that's the case, Barry needs to drain first. I mean, oh, it no. well, no, because I mean, I guess no. Way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Semifinals. So, uh, I mean, if Barry can keep it to like fourteen, that's winnable on the other side. It's not great. I mean, CCTs pretty good but CCD has a lot of ability to come back from well and Matt's playing a lot of space Matt's yeah. got Slave 1 Dengar Stinger I did not see the Space Cruiser that's but... would, that, that's fairly common actually to not play I think uh, most of the CCT lists yesterday were running Space Cruiser yeah it's been more common now to run the Space Cruiser in CCT rather than like Dengar but I right. wonder if they yeah. might have switched which, if that's the case, if there's no space cruiser, that could be bad for Matt. Yeah, it's like situational matchup wise, because not running the space cruiser makes you in, uh, prevents you from being vulnerable to landing claw. Right. Uh, but Y four ops isn't going to run landing claw. Y four ops is going to run X wing cannons. So you really want capitals there. Right. Well, they also run uh, enhanced proton torpedoes too. But no, oh, sure, sure. Yeah, and, and they do. I know Matt is also playing um, Thrawn, uh, Tom Hate Thrawn, yeah. so it ain't too bad. Uh, true. I mean, yeah, I mean, Java Space Cruiser is worse than it used to be. That's certainly true. But I don't. I I, I think it's kind of more meta consideration. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's still it holds a lot of passengers and pilots, and you can you know load up there and hold space fairly well. I mean, I think um, the, the biggest thing is that without the errata, it was almost automatic. It was like 90% probably you'd play it. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Before with this free pool and everything. Yeah. yeah, that was great. But after it was errata, it becomes a meta consideration of like, well, do I want, you know, you, you have to just weigh which, which direction you want to go. Yeah. So it looks like Matt moved over to Indoor, which is interesting, giving Barry the drain at Jakku, although Barry has to pay. So he's force pushing right now to see what's in there. Yeah, and he does he, pay. He may also be doing this to because he also he, he may have done it this way because he knows that there's a. Uh... Wow, oh, he paid two to oh, cancel for, for its set. Uh, it could be worse. Yeah, um, he could have been. He could have moved in this direction 
because the Tarkin Sword had got played the previous turn. Right. So he knew that it wasn't in hand, although he Barry had Force Bow, so he could have just gotten it anyway. I wonder if Barry's going to do the cloaking trick again this turn to satisfy Florter and then can get some pretty good drains in and some TTO damage and actually get Matt under, get Matt to a reasonable level for his Yops deck to win. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I was going to answer, uh, yes, Cat, well, I did make day two. Uh, thanks for the congrats. Uh, thank you, everybody, who reached out and texted me over the weekend and wished me congrats and er- good luck and everything. It means a lot. Um, definitely did not <laughs> expect to do it, <laughs> but, you know, it is it is nice to say that I've actually been able to top eight one event. So, yeah, I like this. Instead of trying to cloak, Maul doesn't, you know, Maul can sit there. You don't have to really worry about a lot from Matt. I mean, if Matt held on to some randomness, whatever. Yeah, like, Matt's Matt's played most of the dangerous pilots so far. There's, like, a solo that's still in there, maybe. Right. Um, but, so, but solo's not dangerous right now because Chewie and Ray are both deployed. So Right, and Poe's gone. Matt's Fence. playing CCT for space, Catwell. Well, he's playing CCT with some space, or, or, not sorry, for sorry, space. Sorry, sorry, sorry. CCT for dark side. Sorry, I mean, for dark there side could be... Bit. We we did have some weird conversations about stuff, so... <laughs> so, that was why Barry was trying to put together the Saber 1 combo was to get the Naboo drain out as well mm. to help increase the pressure. If okay. he had been able to do... Oh, uh, yeah, if he had been able to do that earlier, then... Yeah, if he had been able to do that a lot earlier, he might have been able to get some stuff. No, solo on the ground. So, oh, solo with Chewie there. Yeah. Uh, this could not... This this battle might not go well. There's Beaumont Ken, I think. No, that's Finn. That one's Finn, I think. Yeah, that's definitely Finn. So, yeah, this battle's not... This battle's going to be probably pretty bad. Um, and Matt's like, we battling here. Yeah. Cause he's he gets to shoot somebody. Gerard. Yeah, because he has the same forfeit as Boba Fett, but lower defense, and then draw his two battle destinies. Rebel flight suit and BB-8. Jeez, so twelve effectively. And a two. Against, or no, any it was the. Uh, against the, a one. Yeah. And then he can forfeit Finn to use. <laughs> right. Uh, let's see. So there's, uh, six, eleven, uh, sixteen Did forfeit Barry not there? Wanna, oh, no. He, never mind. I was thinking Barry didn't want to redraw again, but that was the wrong ship. Yeah. It looks like 29 to 11. Yeah, and 16 forfeit. So he will have to use a gick or peel some. I mean, that was about as good as a battle gets. <laughs> Looks like Barry's got one, three, four, five, six, seven cards left. I mean, and Matt even gets to lose first, so he gets to forfeit Finn to use first before any right. of the peeling happens. Well, like... even if he peels, you peel one at a time, so he could take, oh, he would get yeah, a forfeit he would, he action. He would get the chance to, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sure Barry's just trying to figure out how to cut the diffie a little bit more, but... Given that we're in the battle damage segment, his options for that are rather limited. Well, no, I meant he might be trying to get that, but, I mean, Matt's got a huge hand. He might just be trying to get Matt to maybe lose something off reserve deck or something. And Yeah, but there's no reason for him to do that. No, Matt should make the right play and... I mean, if he's peeling a bunch, he can even, like, battle again here, like... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, Barry's going to battle and not let Matt get an extra retrieval in. Yeah. Without general lay in play, it's not actually super great to do that. Because the only battle available is the one in space, which is probably not a good one. Depends on how Barry loses here, I suppose. No, you well, get it's five in hand. That's still enough to cover all the damage yeah, yeah. that's going to happen here. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that should be more. Nah, he's got to so. lose. Yeah. And then have two down. 
Honestly, I think I would unless that the lot losing the force costume everything, I probably would have left it um just because you can battle uh Ozel in and then then do drains and No, that. he had to lose Ozel and some and he only had like four down, so he would have he would have just died if he lost. Oh, okay. Matt is five in hand. So he lost Ozzel in three, so yeah, he would have just lost without it. Yeah. What's the other table looking like? Uh, Jared and Joe, last update we heard... Yeah, it's happening right now. Last update we heard was that uh, Joe on um, communing, I believe it was Qui-Gon communing, uh, nabbed over in front of Jared's uh, Emperor and, and Zizor. Let's see get the count it looks like a pretty oh damn it matt why would you do that these people need to learn how to play on camera <laughs> i think i did it right looks like 20 that's that's less than stellar for barry i, I think he was hoping to get him down to get him down into the teens yeah 23 Ooh, yeah no no that was... oh 23 on deck yeah yeah, yeah. that's rough uh, I mean, Yops can win by a lot, and it will keep your loss pile low when it does. But that's going to be tough. Yeah, I feel like again, I feel like CCT has the tools though to to be able to. No, it, the math straight up starts out in your favor for Yops right away. Um, it just depends on what Matt does. Um, I think we figured out the best way to do it is to not deploy Nalhuda and not give him the extra system to drain at and just, you know, pay to drain on the ground until you can go to space and get your one battle in and then just stack and make them come to you. Don't ever chase them. Yeah, you're going to get your drain snapped, but, you know, if you start chasing too soon, you can get a rebeat in and then you're now even further behind. So... Um. Yeah. You know, if I think if Barry had been allowed to play his uh, hunt down deck, this would have been a lot different of a game. But I mean, that's hard to say. Well, um, I think. I mean, certain certainly it would have been closer. Yeah. Um. I think. Uh, I think hunt down in general is like not is not super good against OA. It's probably not. Yeah, it is the same picture. It's not an AI picture. It's just a foil Anakin then, or Darth Vader betrayer. I mean, it's it's not super useful, but I mean, you do have you do have damage that you're doing. You know, he can just cloak in space, and then if he wanted to, or he could drop guys elsewhere. It's not bad, but uh. Looks like Joe has 14 hand in life, and I wonder what he has in, or what uh, Jared has in. I didn't see that from Dan's update. But they're going to probably take a few minutes break, so I guess we can as well if you want to, or uh, we can hang out here. Yeah, let's let's break real quick, and we'll, uh, we'll come back to you once we have game two going for Matt and Barry. Yeah, it looks like it'll be probably five, ten minutes, so. All right, stay tuned, guys. Yep. That one.
All right, it, it looks like we are back. Um, like, I, like I was saying, it is Yavin 4 Ops versus CCT. Uh, Justin should be back with us shortly. He, I think, is still on his break. Uh, we did not realize they would be playing so quickly. Um, so I guess Barry places his objective and restore freedom out of play, which has to be good for Matt Scott. Um, I guess we're still waiting. So, yeah, like I was saying, I think this is a good matchup for Yavin 4. Um, you can get, if you can get the first turn Luke, he can pull the rest of his stuff and just set up in space. He Once he flips, he retrieves two. So he retrieves one with Luke and retrieves one with the objective. Um, he can, you know, projection the audience chamber drain which drops it down to a drain of one. Uh, Matt can drain for one and one at uh, the Cloud City one, which can't be projection. Uh, it can go really bad for Barry if Matt's got open hands like Probot or Afra and can drop into the Yavin 4, um, the War Room, uh, just because it'll set up a late game drain of two. Well, drain of one because there's multiple projections in there. But they, um, and it, you know, and Yops can pull Coward, so it won't be too bad. By the way, welcome back. Uh, I was just, I just giving the rundown on the deck. Uh, I don't believe Barry is playing R3PO. That's why he's going to lose. I believe he <laughs> probably is playing General Dodonna. He might not be playing Dodonna. I, I don't know why you wouldn't. I think he's fantastic. He does not have to be at the war room. You don't have to be at the war room for his text to work. Right, but you do have to be at the war. But you do have to be at the war room because that's how you get him into play. <laughs> that, that's how you get him, unless you're playing strike planning. Is he playing strike planning? No, but I mean, okay. you could also just randomly draw him. Sure, but he's kind of middling if you do that, and then you have to find a pilot spot for him. No, no, you can put him as a passenger, gold leader, go one, or sure. But you have to be. That's what's like I. The, the Y4 that I was playing didn't have very many ships that had right. passenger capacities. Well, and I, I, think, so. I think Barry might still be playing the Falcon instead of Han Chewie in the Falcon combo, and that opens up more spots for Dodonna yeah. as well. Um, is he a pilot? I don't believe he is. I think he's just a pa Like I think oh. he would just be a passenger. Well, then it's exactly the same number of slots as Han Chewie in the Falcon. <laughs> Han oh, Michael yeah, yeah. Two passenger slots. Fair, fair, fair. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, I keep forgetting the virtual one does. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so... So, I mean, the R3PO, admittedly, is like a meta call. Like, right, right. Like, R3PO is fantastic if you're play, expect to play against ISP. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was what we were talking about with Yavin 4 Ops when we were looking at build, playing this. It was like, is the meta going to be heavy ISB? If it is, then we got to start doing some other things because well, you know, ISB this... is almost assuredly going to get a spy to your war room turn one. Sure. So I think this. I mean, I think this deck could definitely beat. Oh no, I agree. But you oh, have you just to build it differently. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah. have to plan around them going to the war room first turn. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yep. And so Barry's going straight with Luke, which is the right play. Use Luke to pull all wings. Now, when we were testing it, Brian Fred grabbed my all wings combo, which was highly irritating, and kind of slowed me down a little bit. Oh, in terms of your cycling. Yeah, sure. and. It, well, I mean, it also just made it harder to find my ships and pilots together. And What third effect did he start here? He should have started um, squadron assignments, walkling, and uh, don't know what that is. Dan, can you give us a, uh update on what Barry's other third effect is? I can't read the card. And yeah, he he had projection opening hand. We were playing like three projections in our build, so yeah, I believe Barry also has three. Oh, okay, so he started. I think the Gick effect. We didn't hit it. Oh, okay. That's what it looked like. I just wasn't a hundred percent sure. I didn't. Uh, um. And that maybe I I don't know if he needs that, but I mean it does save him from an, any initial beatdowns that. Um. 
he might get put on him. But I gotta be honest, I don't know what that card. I think it's the Gig does. effect for <laughs> light side. We didn't hit it. Let's see. Nope. Oh uh, no, it's your the... fourth generation is plus one at systems you control. Oh okay. Okay, so that's fine. That's, yeah, yeah. That's, pretty that's reasonable. even better. So yeah, I mean he'll he'll generate some more force. Oh, he might have taken out the Aquarius then. Yeah, it looks like. If he does that, then he might want to do. Um, he might he would do that instead to keep his activation high. Yeah. Um, looks like he's got Poe in hand. Another projection, maybe. And now he's turned his hand. I can't see. <laughs> and now he's completely flipped it and ruined everything. Uh. So. so he opts not to pay to drain. I think Kylo probably would have paid to drain, actually. Well, no, because there's no battle plan. I certainly Did he drain for one? Okay, actually looks like he did drain for one. Yeah. All right, he's fine then. Yeah, I don't think Barry's going to pull it. I think he's going to try to get Oh yeah, no. You know, Scott to pull it, and yeah. Matt should pull it after that drain. Um. Let's see, so light says getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven next turn. Yep. That is Cad Bane to the Cloud City, Cloud City Carb Carbonite Chamber. Which can't be projected. Yep. Um from Barry like with Barry's first turn, it's hard to say if he has Dodonna or not. I, I suspect he might still, but usually if you have to pull Haven and then you deploy Luke, that's most of your force. can't always deploy the Dodonna then, which is another reason why it's not always the best thing to put in there because then you have to make the choice sometimes first turn between yeah. Haven or Dodonna. But it is super helpful to have him in there just because of the plus one to draws and he, you know, straights up, you know, straight up... Uh, you know, doesn't let spies there, so he's safe, which is really big. He's moderately safe. Well, yeah, I guess if they have presence. Well, presence is unlikely because you know, they have to control the system to be able to play presence. Ah. Uh, but like, Ellis definitely happens. Yeah, yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, and that's why Although we were Matt. I, when Matt, when I played against Matt yesterday, and he was playing Y four. He started insurrection. Yeah, that was gonna say we started yeah. insurrection in ours just to stop that. Yeah. Um, and make it a little bit easier. Um. But, I mean, when Barry draws a five here, and or a four here, and doesn't actually get to, you know, drain for more, then I mean, that's as, why you played Adana. Well, but as he said, that he didn't have enough force anyway to... Right, right. Oh, I know. To I'm play just Adana's saying. turn. What is that? Oh, projective. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty reasonable. Yeah, he should probably pay for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there's a five. Yep. That's a 3PO puller. And that was the other. Th that, that that was actually the thing that that I was finding when I was playing the deck. It's like the the destiny of your interrupts and stuff is so high that like and if you that... if you miss on turn one, then you just like play another ship, and then you almost certainly right, you, right, you right. almost certainly hit on turn two. Right, so right, right. whatever. Like, it's the first turn hit is nice. No, like, the, the the first turn hit is that is like first turn hit certainly better than missing, obviously. But, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Largely, it was just like I don't think it's like I ultimately felt like it just wasn't worth playing the Dodonna. Especially if you could bait your opponent into like playing spies to your site, and then you like play coward and play and play R three PO, and just like right. thanks. <laughs> so Matt loses double disarmed here. He uh, stacks one and uh, loses one to the lost pile. Yeah, those those are not cards that are gonna come up. No. Uh, Matt won by twenty three. Twenty three. Okay. That's doable. And, yeah. Jar and Jared won by eleven over Joe. He did. Oh yeah, Matt also has search and destroy, which that's will a help huge advantage. different maker. Right, right. That that's really what you need to beat this deck. Yeah. Um, he did put Dengar in there. So looks like Barry pulls all wings, uses all wings to get a ship, which is typical. Yeah, I mean you were mentioning that. Uh, it's wedge, that, it looks like. Yeah, you mentioned that B Fred had um, grabbed all the wings. wings against you. 
I mean, it, it's a, it's a yeah. I mean, it's a call. I think like because pulling um, grabbing the all wings represents both slowing down um, Y four in terms of their setting up their their whole package and everything, and also making it so that your battles may be more stable, particularly if you're leaning on destiny limiters, like. If you, right, right. if you want to stop them, if you want to both stop them from being able to spin and also want to slow them right. down, like, if you think that you're going to be able to play and win a long game, then you don't want to do that. You want to hold it to grab, like, it could be worse, worse or right. something like or that. I think, Barry, since we saw the uh, 3PO puller, it's a safe assumption that 3PO and Word Doomed might be in here, too. Um, no coward shield with farm boy Luke. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. He pulled. I mean, but you uh, don't retrieve on the first one. Usually, you'd rather pull all wings unless you already had the all wings. Yeah. I mean, I I would rather be able to get my ships out. Well, because again, remember last game when we were talking about matching ships. The well, longer you go, the harder it is to put them together. Agreed. I mean, it may depend also. So because one of the things, right, is he flashed um, he, he, he used uh, squadron assignments on turn one for Luke. So from that he gets to see and assuming that Barry knows his deck as well as I assume he does um, n can figure out what is in what was in the seven card force right. the seven card force pile. And so from there you may not actually need to verify your deck to know what you can match with. Right. Potentially. Um, I mean, really, all it's it's really true of all decks, so it's hard to say that it's like particularly true for Y four. Um, but like matching ships in general, I think uh, knowing your deck list like back and forth helps so much with right being able to do those things and do and do your matches, do your pulls, and time them out correctly so that you always hit. Um. Yeah, and I, I, I'm sure Matt or and Matt's probably definitely trying to find his search and destroy here to get that up online. Oh yeah. Um, once he gets that going, it's gonna be hard for Barry to keep this go close. And the longer it's in play, yeah, the harder it yeah, you is want, gonna be. To yeah, you get. Want, definitely want to find it as soon as possible. And then like, I'm assuming when he looked through his deck, he found it in there, and that's why he's paying to drink. Because if you if you look through your deck and you don't find it, yeah, then you, you're just drawing at this point. Yeah. Or you already have it. No, he had. Uh, you'll be dead. Yeah, I mean, the, the, you'll be dead helps helps too. Certainly. I do not know if Barry's playing altar. Um, altar Barry, is still Barry. Barry is playing. Or yeah, Barry is playing an altar. <laughs> altar is still hard because altar can, um, uh, like you don't have for sure good guys to altar with. Yeah. And you're like you were saying, your, your destiny's destiny is really actually high. really high. Yeah, yeah, on the good side your destiny's really high. On the other hand, your destiny's really high. So. Right. You kinda <laughs> wanna like drop a Yoda in space or something to be able to start uh Yeah. When you're, like, you're, when you're like, I hope I draw less than a four because Luke is what I've got and my whole deck is four is five. So it's like, uh oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean it'd be nice if we could change it from you having four ops to like Naboo ops and then you could pull Yo deploy Yoda and then Pull the sense and alter and control and there you go. chill there. I think that's what we should do. Chris Kelly, get on that. <laughs> Change this from Yavin 4 Ops to Naboo Ops. And then we could play Get to Your Ships instead of Squadron Assignments and be more thematic. It'd be great. Let's do that. <laughs> Bravo Fighters. Oh, this sounds like a plan. Alright. Uh, so it looks like, you know, he's just going to drain for two. He's going to lose some, like ground battle tricks that he knows he's not going to need. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's just he's losing whatever he doesn't need on the ground. Yep. He you deploy as little as possible on the ground and yeah, he's got his Duro IG88 set up so he can tunnel vision. Yeah, he'll be he'll, he'll be, find that search and yeah, destroy quicker. Rather likely to find search and destroy. Also because search and destroy was in deck, he's losing from hand so right, he doesn't right. feel a search and destroy. Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, do you want any food? Sure. I like eating. Uh, it looks like Brian Fred. He messaged me if, from Jimmy John's. Sure, Jimmy John's is good. What do you do? You know what you want? Um, no, but I'm sure I can figure it out. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, this is one of the reasons I felt like, um, well, this is actually I keep coming back to it. But it's one of the reasons why when we heard what happened to Tom Hayde, I was like, oh, he must have changed decks because CCT has so many of these ways to cause little bits of damage to your opponent and to retrieve on its own and kind of mitigate a little bit to where like even if it's a bad matchup and even if CCT is going to lose, probably not by thirty-one. Right. <laughs> well, CCT. So here's the thing: like CCT has to make a move and actually get something to happen, mm -hmm. and the longer they don't do that, 
the more in favor it is for Yops. Sure. And if they do it too soon, they get punished for it, and that's what happened to Tom. Sure. Tom just got punished. So I'd actually be really interested to hear your thought on this because um, I had looked at playing. You know, Dan was saying like I played around with a Y4 Ops for the Constellation at Nationals. I'd played around with it in OCS for the past couple of months. And my feeling of it, and the reason I wasn't really in on it for this weekend, was that it felt to me like your plans, like if you put a lot of time into it and knew it backwards and forwards, you could develop plans to beat most of the decks in the meta. Um, but if those plans didn't work, it was really hard to fall back and really hard to plan B it and do something else because your deck really only does kind of the one thing right yeah and you dedicate so much of your deck to doing it yeah so one of the things is like with this deck i think for it to succeed is more based on meta calls Mm -hmm. and yesterday Mm -hmm. most people didn't have search and destroy in their decks sure and today they probably started putting them in and that that changes everything right there. In a meta without search and destroy, Yavin Four Ops is really good because you can do your plan and you don't have to spread too much to get it done. Um, you get to, you know, do your thing. I I think Barry's actually going to be able to flip here too. Um, he should flip here. If he doesn't flip here, it's incorrect. <laughs> Because he moves the ships one at a time, so even if you move Luke, you control two battleground systems with yes. two rebels. So he should flip here. That is accurate. Uh, uh, do we want to? Dan, can you tell him to stop and flip? Because he should flip here if he moves them one at a time. He should flip because he had wedge and ship and Luke. It looked like, and he should flip. Yeah. Okay, he did flip. Okay, good. I I missed it. So okay, 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 good, cool. good, good. Yeah. So um. And look at the menu real quick. <laughs> that's that's what I'm attempting I was attempting to do. It was trying to make me log in. We we um, just missed it. We're we're also looking at menus, so uh yeah, I wanted to make sure he did flip. It's also kinda of hard to see that card. I'm blind. Blame that. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he I just wanted to make sure he flipped it. I knew he wasn't gonna get any retrieval off of it. But he he did get to flip it so that way he could um, uh, he could set it up because it's if you don't flip then it's you have to move your guys around to get the two rebels again and it's a pain yeah so you you want to flip when you can otherwise you have to get four and most of the ships you play are not gonna hold rebels in space um, because you end up playing guys like snap or um, yeah it's it's hard for it, like. Like the, Poe. I think and... the, the, I'm not. I'm pretty sure the build that I had had five rebels in it, <laughs> so it might have just barely been possible to flip that way. Right. Um. Uh. That one, no lettuce. Okay. Uh, hold on. Uh, no mayo, mustard. Uh... uh. Okay. So we're on to Matt's turn. I believe he used IG88 and then drained. Um. Presumably because he found Search and Destroy, would be my guess. Uh, Let's see, number 10, no lettuce? Yep. That's the hunter score. Oh, no, 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 number 10, only lettuce. Oh, okay. Only lettuce. I can't listen either, so I can't read, I can't (laughs) listen, I can't see. It's all bad on senses today. Lack of sleep. And retrieved, yeah, with his objective. Yeah, of course. Um, although he doesn't seem to have played search. Oh, he, he, I mean, it was indexed. He might not have actually activated it that turn. That's yeah, possible. yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he still may have missed it, or maybe he's trying to set up a space package, but that yeah. I, that does not seem right to me. Uh, I mean, the other thing that he probably, well... I That's a five. Um, I was going to say, the other thing oh, that he... he sorry, may, that was a four. ...may need to be looking for... Is uh, is no escape potentially? Um, in case he leaves something important. Uh, no, in case uh, in case Barry has honor. Oh yeah, uh, I do not know if Barry has honor. I don't think, because I recall that he does, but it is possible that he does. Um, <laughs> I thought I was the only one that still played honor. <laughs> 
God, I'm so janky. Well, well see, this is this is the this is the other thing that I liked about the Y4, and I like that I particularly liked about not playing the General Dodana was not playing Strike Planning opens up a flex slot for. I, yeah, I mean, I'd never played Strike Planning anyway, yeah. but yeah, I like having that flex slot. Like, you, like we were playing Insurrection there, we put Four Luck in there. Yep. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could do Insight and force them to now have to find no escape, especially in this. Like, you force Matt to have to not only find no escape. But then he's got to find another, um, you know, he's got to find Surge and Destroy on top of that. Whereas you just go, your turn one, go pull Honor and yep. say, go find all this stuff. Yeah, and it works against, it's good against Hunt Down as well for the same reason. Like, right. It's like, oh, I don't even have to cancel this right. now. And, like, I, well, and Hunt Down plays mostly 12 card start now. Yeah. So 12 card start Hunt Down is, you know, not going to have no escape on the board to start. They don't, they can't start it. Yeah. Um, Shadow Collective has to find it because they don't usually want to start, you know, do it either. Yeah, and Shadow Collective has a really hard time flex starting. It's effects. right. So it's I mean, yeah, so actually, Mine Shadow actually... Collective can actually flex start superficial damage because you they are um insign or, um inconsequential losses because they won't need it against. Um... Well, I actually flex started the Gig effect. Uh, today. sure. Either one. Yeah, like, right. You, yeah. You just you won't need that against Y four ops, so that makes sense. Right. And. You know, like I actually flex started it against Matt and started security precautions instead to help keep the activation instead. Okay. Uh, my plan was against anything mains to to play the Gick effect and not do the security precautions, and then anything not mains, I could probably just be I could probably survive long enough with the actual Gick until if I got the com or the effect early enough or something. That's reasonable. I mean, the other one that we had, and this was actually like the plan that made me feel like, oh, Y4 Ops might actually be might actually be the deck. It was um, the what chance do we have? Yeah, uh, yeah. Because Y4 is one of the few decks that can actually make what chance work against um, against Shadow Collective. Yeah. Um... All right, so right before I got food, apparently I'm getting mustard packets because I confused the guy at Jimmy John's. <laughs> um, yeah, no, uh, yeah, you I mean, and if you start, what chance do we have? You don't play the honor package now, right? So you. Oh, no, you can do both. But I thought, doesn't what chance you have require you just like to a minimum of one or no? Uh, yeah, so it requires to a minimum of one. Uh, but you just wouldn't, you wouldn't pull the honor package against Shadow Collective, you would just start what chance. Right, oh, that's fair. I mean, I, I think I'd rather just do the what chance we have most of the time anyway. Like, the only time you're going to need it other than that, well, I guess, I mean, it depends. Like, if we're talking Search and Destroy, obviously honor is better, but in this meta, Search and Destroy wasn't big. And so I thought right. we could just do the what chance do you have, because sure. it's startable, and no, I'd agree. I, I I think it's like you you can kind of flex around, like you can kind of you can kind of maneuver things around and kind of pick whichever one you want. Uh, right. Is the other table underway? What's the update? I believe they did start. Um, yeah, they probably just started not too long ago. Um, they finished after ours did yeah. and took a little bit break. Yeah. Uh, it's AOBS against profit. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things I like about the Yavin 4 Ops deck is the flexibility that it has. Yeah. And I, I really kind of enjoy this meta because it still feels a lot fresh. Like, there's still a lot of untapped potential out there. Um, it, one of the things that I, I talked a lot about this weekend was it's it feels like it's more of a wide-open meta, and we have, um, you know a lot of skilled players out there, like the average skill level of a player is a lot higher, you know, like, you know, it used to be the guys at the top tables at, you know, five and Oh, we're going to just go on in breeze. And, you know, you had to play three tough games afterwards to win one and, and just missed. And, you know, I was one and two and had to win five out. And, you know, the, the way the games go, it's just, you know, it's a grind, and it's a lot of meta calls and flexibility, and you know, playing decks that don't get pigeonholed. And I think some players still kind of played those decks that pigeonholed them into certain aspects, and then paid for it when they didn't judge the meta right. Yeah, I mean, I think I can't remember. I, I know, um, I know, I had the conversation with a couple different people. It looks like he slave assembled one, his space package. So. Yep, slave one, Thrawn, and Woof. Okay. 
All right. Um, that's Again. not a great team to go up at Haven, but okay. All right, so we got Ponda Ponda Bava Bava also. So that, that's a lot better. So we're gonna have a destiny and one to attrition, and then subtract one from light sides. What's I his? Th it's I think it's Kian, Santage or it's Kian Khan or whatever. Ke it's Kian Khan and Grace Quadra One, right? Which is making a journey three, and then right. a Hunter and the Falcon, right? And okay. I mean, if Barry's got like a, I mean, I mean this is still like not really good, like. But I mean, that's the definitely weakest system to go to. And see, Barry yeah, versus versus Wedge and Luke, yeah, I guess. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like. I mean, does he have like the Dengar too? Otherwise, I don't really, I don't really feel like this is a good call. I think this is a little early. Yeah. I think Matt is feeling pressured to make a move. Maybe he's got something I don't know about. I mean, our our WAP versus CCT game, I saw a lot of what it was. So. I, I wonder if maybe he missed activating Search and Destroy twice and. So now he's just like I gotta I gotta do something I gotta I can't I can't sit here. Right, and uh, I mean, that's like kind of, that's kind of unlucky that he drew both his smugglers so he couldn't download one. Download yeah. one with both. Yeah. <clears throat> Hondo on Ellis is it? Yeah, that's forfeit fodder. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all of this is forfeit fodder to drain for free and. Sure, sure. And I I I just think right now though, Matt shouldn't be feeling pressured to need to drain for free, but I think he realizes Barry has, um, you know, the, he's been playing it to where he's just going to sit there and drain for three and three at two systems and force Matt to do something. And so Matt, I think is deciding now is the time to do it and see what Barry has and put it on Barry to deal with it so that Barry can get back to draining for three. And there's... I think that's Search and Destroy. Uh, that looks like Search and Destroy. It's hard to tell because Brian Fred has cards everywhere. Um, so, yeah, I mean, well, he... We'll soon find out if it was Search and Destroy. Yeah, I think Dan just confirmed. Yeah. Um, I don't know why this hasn't updated. That happened. That's happened a couple of times. We're fine. Okay, that's just weird. Sorry. But anyways, uh, I mean, Matt. Sh I don't think Matt should battle here. I don't think. Uh, eh, maybe. I mean. No, because he won't get to retrieve. He's. He would just lose stuff. This. That seems bad. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was thinking. And I don't know if Barry. Barry could have like a rapid fire into enhanced proton torpedoes and then stay sharp. <laughs> Ooh, that and, would be a bad. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then your your day goes from good to a lot worse real fast. Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, that's what I, I was saying with this, this Yavin 4 Ops deck is it's, it's so hard to play against if you just don't understand those little ins and outs that it can do. And not understanding that can really cause you to make a huge mistake and get blown out in a way that, you know, it, you, you were up 23 after game one and now all of a sudden you, You've thrown game two away for no reason, and yeah. but one of the things that, like I was saying earlier too, I think Barry's doing really well is just playing the two systems, not dropping the third one yet, holding off on it. Um, I think he paid to play it and miss, so I, I wonder if he was just paying one to do a, a, a reserve deck check, and then has it in hand and waiting to deploy it with the ship over there. Now that you know Matt's kind of deployed his fleet. Um, and if he does that, then, you know, he can do the battle here. Yeah, Matt does not battle. He goes to search and destroy. Um, and then he can spread out after he clears out some of the space that Matt has. Yeah. And Matt play. Oh, and Matt gets resistance now online with the, the yeah, system, which is huge. Too. I was so, going to say, I think, uh, I think one of the... I don't want to say I don't know if underrated is the right word, but one of the one of the nice aspects of CCT that to me makes it um, both a kind of more interesting deck to be top to be you know good in the meta than court, um, but also I think I think just makes it more fun than court is that it has this multi-dimensional aspect. Like court is very much an aggro deck. Like if, right. if court's stuck in this situation where it's like, well, I don't have any good battles, like well then you're probably, you're probably losing. losing. Like, yeah. You're probably not going to win that game. Like. I, 
you, you, you just you really have to be battling because court just doesn't have this you'll be dead it doesn't have the retrieval from that objective like you just you don't you don't have all of various you're little aspects you're not starting to spare on the yeah table. you're not starting to spare so you don't get the drain bonus at the audience chamber you're not uh, getting a captive for ig and yeah. you don't have that quick ig pool to start tunnel visioning yes yes yeah, so it's harder for you to find your cards anyway even if you're right. playing search and destroy like all of this stuff just adds up to like uh, like obviously, Core's a very different deck, but I think that difference is where CCT shines and Court kind of Although, ebbs and flows. Like Court wouldn't be doing bad here because Barry would just be losing force every turn or every draw. Every turn to, to, yeah. to the Tatooine yeah, sister. Every, so, so that would cover the 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 you'll, the you'll be dead thing. Right, and you know every one of his deploy phases, he's losing one at the end of it, and. If court gets search and destroy online, although it's harder because they can't find it as easy. I mean, but you yeah. can. They play accelerates for the bridge, so yeah. you know they can find it through that. It's also easier for court to do this space thing that he's done now, right? Because obviously your space is pullable, right? And so. that's the other big aspect. Like Yavin Four can't just go, "Hey, I'll just drop Luke here by myself, turn one, <laughs> and you're not gonna ha and draw and use all my force, turn one." So I'm going sure this will be fine. Yeah, yeah. Like, Zuckus, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Zuckus, some else, we'll sure, why not? Forlom and yeah. call it a day, and oh look, there goes the best part of your space package in Yavin Four. So, um, and that's what I was—that's what I was saying. Like, I feel like this meta has very much um, opened things up, and that looks like an altar on Barry. And I think yeah, that's why he chuckled at the search and destroy was because oh, he, he just lost—he just, he just lost the altar. the altar. Yeah. But and now so, he gets to retrieve it with Luke. Yeah, Matt Matt plays the imbalance combo. Sure. Um, lose it again. And then I think what Barry's probably going to do here is place the top card out of play and retrieve with his objective to get the altar back and track it around and get it going. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I think that's what he's got to do to get that altar, or the search and destroy offline. But, you know, and, and one thing <clears throat> is if you look at Matt Shields, he's shield busted. No, there's no try, no oppressive enforcement so that search and destroy does not go back into his uh use pile it goes straight to the lost pile yeah um although cct does still have access to scum and to, to to scum retrieval and its own effect retrieval so it is possible that he could actually yeah, yeah. that he could retrieve it back anyway right um but it's not it's not uh oh, as as guaranteed good there's and, a lot of ships. <laughs> and one thing one thing that Matt also did that is huge risk is when he deployed there, he... Oh, okay, he can just place Walkling out of play to retrieve, too. Yeah. And, I mean, because the control tunnel vision is kind of a big card for you to... Because it'll stop a drain for... Of course, they're all just drains of ones, I guess, but... Um, he, uh, he also had to deploy to Yavin 4 where Haven is. And that's going to make things a lot worse yeah and this organized attack can't be making matt feel good about this he's he'll be able to kill hauntry and the falcon <laughs> no we are in the semifinals yep. we've got barry versus matt scott here and then joe versus jared on the other one and barry has a metric ton of power here um and draws, these are subtracted by one. So and that's drew a one. And a, so one and a three. And a four. So another three. Oh, the oh. first one was a destiny to power. Yeah. Yep. And then a seven at the end. So he drew. A lot. That's, yeah. That's so lot. <laughs> looks like a Obi and Radiant seven. And we got a. a rebel barrier. A oh, well. barrier. And then I think it's the that's starship the, combo. It's a destiny to a trish. Oh, sorry. You're yeah, yeah. And then the rebel, and then a uh, rebel artillery. I think was the last one versus. So that's six, nine, twelve. Destiny. I don't think Wolf hits Destiny's no, power. No, just, just battle Destiny's. So he still gets the. Is it is Ob two? Sorry, what? Ob and Radiant Seven. I think that's Ob and Radiant Seven's a two. Yeah. Yeah. So that's still rough. I mean, you know, Barry will have to lose something because Hanju and the Falcons there, and the organized attack does not protect that. Right, so. and that is what is that for? Is that an Aura thing and a Twilight Advisor? Okay, so yeah, that's a seven to attrition. Yeah, and Barry's got six, nine, twelve to attrition plus whatever battle damage this is. So yeah, 
Yeah, so probably I would think it's going to be Thrawn. Probably Thrawn, Hondo, Ellis would be my guess. That seems reasonable. Okay. What a beating! I didn't get mustard. <laughs> they got they they uh, they got the mustard out. What's that from? I, I, I'm, at, I'm at a no dog. For, it's a no for me. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I, I just so, have to stump about, about Brian Fred. So it looks like actually it was Pondo Baba and. I mean, he did lose Hondo and Ellis and Peel three as well. Yeah. So. So I wonder if he did that because he doesn't want to have to commit another pilot because he would have to commit another pilot if he lost Thrawn. Right. Um, but Thrawn would have covered more and, damage. Yep. And Barry got wisely got rid of the card on top of Alter to get the Alter back. Now, of course, uh, the altar does not get Barry out of the woods completely because he still has to track the three. Right. <laughs> the well, he found an Obi in Radiant 7, so he can start tracking that. There you go. So as long as he tracks that, he should be okay. Yeah. But I don't know if Barry's thinking that far ahead because Barry hasn't slept in a few days. <laughs> So I mean, he is still so so. Matt's still causing three damage every turn without having to pay, and then also he's got the two drains. Right. Unfortunately, his and his hand is a little small now, so he yeah he doesn't have the retaliation that he needs. And I mean, he's not going to retaliate there anyway. He's more just going to flee to Luke and Wedge. Yeah, but that seems also better. seems less good anyway. I mean, that just seems bad too, but it's less bad than the situation he's in. <laughs> And this is kind of what I was worried about. His play here was he well, went a little too soon. But, I mean, he couldn't just sit there and take six and drains for... No. I mean, I do think that, like, if he's found if he's found Gick, right, then he can kind of do whatever. And, like, That's if, true. if he can stack, like, if he can put, um, like, a Lady Proxima up there would be okay. Um, if he can put, like... I get if he could have saved the Pondo Baba. Well, and this is pilot, right? Like, well, and this is where I also like. Um, I like having uh, uh, the Java Space Cruisers because then you've got all these guys chilling on the same one. Right. It unfortunately tanks against you know uh, Tarn and some <laughs> shots and stuff. Yeah. But I, I think, I think in the grand scheme of things, it's a little bit better than. I mean, it's less power, but it holds more to stay afloat longer right and so it, it so it's kind of it, it kind of works better for cct actually then right uh to where like you maybe wouldn't want to do all of that in court necessarily but for cct sometimes you just want to stay in space like this and you okay sure so singer and guru yeah uh sure i mean well, that's actually fine because then you can actually you can move in front of them and draw two battle destiny, and then he can only cancel one. Well, Dangar's good. Okay. But I mean, he. Uh, that's still only one, so you can't battle this turn. You have right. to move over. Yeah. Um, but all of that's all all of that's fine because standing in front of that stack is is actually pretty decent. Right. Now, now if there I was like a light side gravity shadow here. Well, then that would be a disaster, I guess. Um, <laughs> also, don't make that, because then Yav and four ops would be too good. Yeah. I, I do think Barry is in a lot more trouble now. I think Matt has at least done enough to probably secure a victory less than, or to secure a loss less than 23. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 23 is still a huge, like... I mean, Barry still has a lot of cards. Barry, I mean. 42 to 25, is that correct? That can't be right. There's more than 18 cards on the table. There's, There's gotta be. No One, <laughs> two, three, Maybe it's four, 22. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 
And I think there's a lost pile of four, so that's got to be. And he's got six in hand. Yeah, that's, that that yeah, can't be. There's forty-two to twenty-five. Yeah. Dan, here. if we can get an updated uh, life force count for breaks, I don't think that forty-two is correct. Oh, I think that was the power difference oh, okay. in that battle. The oh. forty-two to twenty-five power. All right. Never mind. I'm good with that. That, <laughs> that, that, seems, that, that actually sounds completely correct. That that was reasonable. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the one thing that is bad here for uh, Matt is if there is an X-wing cannon. That would be a disaster. Yes. Because then down goes Guri or down goes Dangar, and yeah, uh, yeah, we we thought that, but that's why you know, you just said it randomly and you didn't say power and it threw us off. But anyways, well, you. it's more. I was looking back in the chat a couple of messages. I didn't know when that one came in to know what it was supposed to be for. Right. Um, um, so Barry does not battle. Okay. What did he play there? Did he play? Something? I think he just moved. No, he just moved something. Okay. So Barry does not have any sort of ship weapons then. Now I believe Barry does have more than one organized attack. So he could certainly have one here or he might be trying to find one yeah i mean i i he could i i think he needs to find the cannons here and i don't think matt should battle matt should just run i mean i think matt should just stand here as long as there's not the cannons there yeah but the problem is if barry just drew into cannons he's in trouble well but there's x-wings on both on both systems so yeah yeah but the other system has less and it doesn't cancel your battle destiny so dangar still is effective um sure fair enough, know, fair enough. It, like because if he takes out stinger you're no longer getting two battle destinies you're getting one sure and sure. then dangar doesn't work that's reasonable is that a cold what is yeah that? it's cold feet okay so now there's an oppressive enforcement okay so we're covered in case the altar does come right. along yeah i think matt not had not getting beat down last turn really bad is what probably just sealed this game and if Barry had found the um, the X-Wing cannon or had already had it at that point last turn would have been really bad like you know you could shoot down Guri, cancel the destiny and you're going to cause some you know attrition against them and then you know possibly take out either a pilot or Dengar and now you don't have to worry about it as much. So I mean, if you have the X Wing cannons, I would certainly shoot down Slave One. Like shooting down Slave One reduces him to one battle destiny, which you no, cancel. That's true. And then yeah, yeah. And then, he I, has, and then he has to lose Dengar to attrition, and then it's like, oh, right. now you're not occupying. Great. That's true. That's probably better. <laughs> um, I just don't know what the maneuver Slave One is off the top of my head. Uh, it's hard for it to matter. Oh, no, 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 never mind. You cannot shoot down Slate 1, because there's, oh, yeah, there's, there's a Thrawn there. Thrawn there. Don't do that. <laughs> oh, it's almost like Matt thought that through, and that's why he didn't lose the Thrawn. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, then you shoot down Guri, he's still only drawing one, you cancel, and yeah. he's got to start losing stuff, and then... Yeah, and Matt's making the right play, leaving that shit alone. Yeah. He's not going to battle... His whole goal is, I'm doing three damage. Who's you're the not passenger there? Right. It's Brian Fred sign cards. Who the hell knows? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know who just got played on Slave One, but it's some more forfeit fodder. Uh, what is that? Is it that... could be worse. Okay. He's oh, doing for it the... for search and destroy yeah, damage. You should probably grab that. I don't oh. think there's anything else in your deck that you want to worry about, unless he's worried about like word doomed. Uh, you could be old enough for word doomed because. Okay. Yeah, that's actually but that's reasonable. Barry did lose a word doomed combo. Oh, so yeah, he's probably not playing Word Doom then. Right. I haven't seen many lists running both. I mean, it's... I've considered running both. The trouble is that, like, a lot of the decks that you're running it for is partly for You'll Be Dead. Right. And so they'll grab you, they'll grab combo anyway, and then you right. don't get to play Word Doom. <laughs> like, right, right. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, update on Joe and Jared. Jared has 3PO undercover at the audience chamber <laughs> and wants to use Odinessa combo to move him to the move phase. We cannot do that, I don't think. But I don't think you can target undercover spies unless it's specific, uh, unless it's specifically, specifically says. Well, I, well, no, because I mean you can no, because you can force lightning and trample them. Right. So maybe that's the thing. I don't hmm. know. Yeah. Interesting. 
Oh, that's a fair point. Word Doom doesn't matter when he has to win by 23 anyway. So. <laughs> I mean, yeah, probably not, but. Well, no, like, the, the, the actual card Word Doom only works when you're under 15. Yeah, oh, I know. So, like... <laughs> In theory, it shouldn't because Matt should just draw up, but if Matt doesn't do that, I mean, you know, there's mistakes are made. I mean, I don't think that Barry can possibly retrieve eight in one turn. He could have it on the edge and track that Rebel Artillery. That's six. And then Solo on the edge. <laughs> Pray. Track two sevens. <laughs> I mean, no, you, you on the edge once, you solo on the edge and pray that you can get at least higher than what you need and you're good. <laughs> It's like, well, if I don't, I lose, and if yeah. I do... <laughs> yeah, if I do, I win. If I don't, I lose. That seems like reasonable. Uh, looks like there's something going on here. Maybe we can get Dan to give us an update about what's going on. Almost the positive, you can't nab it on a curse fight. You can't own them. Yeah, I, I think that that's that's that that wouldn't be the reason, but I think that that interaction should be consistent. So yeah, I would agree that I don't think. You can. It'd be amazing if it happened double on the edge for the win. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so we're apparently taking a break. Uh, maybe Barry's being punished for trying to cheat. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what exactly is happening here. Hopefully Dan can tell us. But um, Or Dan's not paying attention because he's a big poopy head. Holy crap, we got 64 people. That's insane. Of course, one of them's Dan, so never mind. That's less cool. <laughs> uh, it looks like Barry's standing there, so he's probably asking a question of some kind. Right. Uh, rules question for Greg while taking a rules question, okay? Oh, Okay. Yeah, this is the problem when you only have one judge and uh, <laughs> multiple rulings going on. And especially one that involves Greg having to go look up that stuff. It's a game of inches. Yeah, the Odin making the move during your move phase, during your move phase, would be a reasonable reason why you can't Lana them. But I don't think, I don't know that that's like the definite reason. So we'll see if we can get an answer on that. But uh, all right, Barry seems to have returned to the table. <coughs> well, that doesn't always be much. Yeah, although <laughs> looks like he's still. Waiting. Oh, Barry has organized attack and wants to make Dengar lost with the cannons. Will he be immune? Um, I believe that once Dengar is not on the table anymore, I thought, it was, I thought Dengar was more like a static effect kind yeah. of thing. Rather yeah, it's, than it's an not a it's not action. a just action or anything. So or a top level action. So I think once Dengar is off the table, he will his immunity canceling will no longer apply. Yeah. So this should be Kin Can and uh, Gray Squadron One and um, Snap. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So then organized attack would. Yeah, make the it organized work. attack is pretty important there because. Yeah, because I mean, neither of those guys are really big. Right, especially since you're not canceling the destiny or something. So. Yeah. Because I mean, um, it's like under normal circumstances, you kind of want to just shoot down Slave One. Oh, you still can't do that. You still can't do that. Justice. You can't shoot down Slave One. <laughs> Stop trying to shoot down the slave one. But I really want to. I mean, I mean, you could if there was some way to bounce Thrawn off of there or blink his game text. Yeah. See, now I'm remembering though the um, the game that uh, I believe Gogolin played against Joe last year, where he was playing Set Your Course and had Maul and shot down the the wild card while Farinette was aboard and they couldn't cancel the, the weapon shot because Maul says you can't do that. <laughs> like, oh no, that yeah. was 
That was a disaster. Holy yeah, I, I've definitely seen some of those things with Maul. Where or it wasn't like, Wildcard, it was one of the Starfighters, but yeah. Right, <laughs> where it's like, I want to do that. Oh, I can't do that now. because Like, uh, I had, I was trying out some cards in WAP for the Shadow Collective matchup, and one of the things I thought of was, I'll take myself to protect the Queen. Yeah, I can't do that, because you can't tar- cancel the Weapon Destiny draw with it. Yep. And I was like, man, that's even a bigger beating than just Maul by himself. So, yep. yeah, no. What is happening? Who is standing in front of our camera with some? That's got to be B-Fred, right? Oh, no, it's somebody's elbow. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> that's not what it looked like. I won't say it. Um, <laughs> I think, though, that, like, the probably the most ironic thing about the Maul weapon canceling thing for me is that, like, the mall weapon canceling thing, I remember in playtesting, got on there because we're like, well, no idea shuts down this blaster deck. Like, right. we can't like we can't be making this deck that's all about shooting people with blasters, and then the one deck where it would be really good, just like, nope, you can't do any of that. Right. And then we chained, then we ratted no idea to cancel the weapon shot and not the destiny, so it mall doesn't actually work against no idea anyway. <laughs> like, oh, awesome. <laughs> like, yeah. no, it hasn't stopped Shadow Collector from being good, so that's that, right. That's a positive part of that. Sure, has kicked me in the pants a few times, so you know. <laughs> it was just—it was just funny to me that the that no idea got eroded in that manner. That, right. <laughs> that then allowed it to circumvent Maul when Maul had that text on there to protect it from no idea. I mean, it wouldn't have. Pro- it only stops once a turn on no idea, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you can fire would, multiple blasters. Oh yeah, there, yeah. And it would have been yeah. Well, terrible, and the but... the errata on no idea does make it so that you can still you can still battle them with shadow collective and you right. can still shoot stuff. Right. Right. Um, the canceling the canceling the weapon destiny was uh, actually was the canceling the West weapon destiny isn't as worse as canceling the targeting though because no the canceling the destiny is worse. No, because you could you still get your used interrupts for firing a blaster. You don't get it if they cancel the targeting because you didn't fire your blaster. Well, the flip side though is that you always have to activate one less. Oh yeah yeah that's fair. I mean but yeah I I'd rather be able to add some destinies and stuff with my interrupts to help clear things yeah. rather than cause well, you're, but, but you're, it also means that if you if you if you track a good number you can and you have multiple weapons or you know you'll get to use it at some point in that battle right I mean it just makes you have to have multiple weapons there to now actually instead of just being able to do one and then they're like oh okay I cancel your destiny fine I'll draw two battle destiny instead or three battle destiny and you're because like no idea when they flip they've got high defense anyway. So, I yeah, mean, you're firing you're at plus. Hit them anyway. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, all the pluses. <laughs> they're not that high. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're not my high. <laughs> you know, Yoda's not the my Yoda's not the uh smallest guy on the defense value scale in their deck. <laughs> my ruling of VS once Dengar is gone. Yeah, that that, that yeah, is also what we think is the case. Uh I think that was I hope that's what Well, we will find Greg out said, soon but... whether that was in fact the answer or not. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Dengar... I mean, Dengar isn't something you actually have to touch in battle and say, I'm activating this text. Yeah. It's just a static text. So if the card's no longer there, the text no longer applies. Yeah. And it's not for remainder of battle. It's just their immunity right. is canceled here. But I... Yeah. I, th- I mean, that's... I would imagine that was what it was. And yeah. there's the imbalance combo again. And Barry really should have grabbed this the first time. I don't know what he's waiting to grab. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, maybe he's waiting to grab, like, if he's thinking there's an Imperial Artillery or Voyeur or something like that. Like, I guess. Some kind of damage interrupt. I mean, Okay, so the retrievals. ruling is, yeah, if Dengar is removed, the immunity comes back. And yeah. that's what we thought. Yeah. Because that's, that's what logically makes sense. And that follows the rules of Star Wars, because all Star Wars rules are logical. No happy answer for Joe and Jared. Hayes says, says you can, can move. move. Okay, so there's still going to be a longer ruling on that game, it looks like. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that one, the un- like the rules regarding undercover spies are complicated Wonky. enough that I don't I don't know them they're, off the top of my head. They're know. almost as bad as the frozen captives rules. I mean, the worst part is that the frozen captive, the the really the worst part is that frozen captive rules and regular captive rules are different. <laughs> That's no, the... the worst part was the frozen captive rules 
were listed under movement abilities instead of under frozen captive rules. Oh, and it didn't tell you that until yeah. I told them, hey, I need you to put this in there because I have no idea what the shit this means. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bad. Yeah, no, it was it was awful. So there's the organized attack after the battle. Sure. Uh, I assume we're going to be paying three to shoot Dangar, which is pretty much immediate. Um, uh, his hit. maneuver's five, so it's like... It's pretty much. Pretty much. It's not 100%. It's pretty much, though. I'd be surprised. I'd certainly be surprised if I missed, but... Yeah. Maybe he was tracking that Obi-Wan, and then... No, he lost the Obi-Wan oh, already. Okay. <laughs> and Barry did lose the other system already and placed it out of play, so maybe that's yeah. what it was. And Oh, yeah. we're grabbing Argonaut's attack. I mean, that uh, seems reasonable. I guess. The immunity thing is huge. I would have I mean, shouldn't you be trying to grab, like, it could be worse? Well, there's, I mean, now that means that that second where Doom combo can shut off some you'll be dead damage now, which is really good. Yeah. And Barry does have 3P on the table, so he can track easy enough. Yeah. And Barry does have a spin, so he's probably going to spin to get his second destiny here, too. Or no, he only Wait, gets does one. Does he have a 3 yeah, No, he's got Yalvin. Yeah. Oh, he's spinning, yep. And another organized attack. Oh, that's brutal. That's a lot of attrition. Uh, that is nine back, though. Although, yeah. the Hermione, so that part doesn't matter. It's more the power, I think. But, yeah. I mean, the one thing with this space is there's not a lot of power on the ships and pilots as it is versus, you know, the organized attack is adding, adding. two power, so four total. And then, you know, those ships and pilots are roughly four. So, I mean, that's 12 plus a spin plus a destiny of eight. You know, probably, like, he's probably at 20-ish, I would imagine. And, you know, three, four, five, not a lot elsewhere kind of thing. So, I mean, it's probably close. That did use all of Barry's okay. force. Yeah, yeah. So. But, I mean, this is going to this is gonna be a pretty back-breaking battle for Matt on this. Greg has ruled in favor of the undercover spy being allowed to move. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's that's our ruling for the day, certainly. So, that is that is how it is going to work for the remainder of the day. Yep. Um. And Barry has, and it could be worse in hand, so he can stop some more drains in a little bit. He's not going to be able to place the card out of play to retrieve this turn, though. Oh, and he does have to lose. Oh, he's overpowered? Ooh. Yeah, I mean, it was only like... Oh. He drew 10 for Battle Destiny. That's... Why is he losing? I do not know. There's no way he lost by that much. I mean, the pilots don't forfeit for a lot. No, but he had organized attack Andrew 10. Yeah, I mean, but now... I guess, actually, as we think about it, right, organized attack only added... Four. To four. Why a four? It's a one for each, isn't it? It. Oh, I thought it was two. I think it's only one for each. Well, anyway, they're... Well, the ships are power, like, four and five, I think, normally. Yeah. Uh, so then... If oh, it's two for Ty, one for X-Wings and Y-Wings. That makes sense. I am think I must be thinking... I just Of all-powered power, weapons. All-powered, yeah. Yeah, that's probably... So then, yeah, he could be outpowered quite a bit there. Yeah, they're power plus one, so... Uh... Yeah, and Barry yeah. scoops now, like because he's he doesn't have any force to move over, and he's got his ship there by himself. Yeah, Matt he's just, drawing. And Matt, Matt just gets a battle back now. Right. Like just find some pilot, add whatever to it, and then just battle back. Right. And... Yep. So it looks like Matt Scott's on to the finals. All right. Which makes me feel <laughs> like the whole qu- Joe had a sense. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Here's a 20 minute ruling, so Joe can have a sense later to stop it. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I guess you have to know that, but still, like, oh man, I would have, I would have just been like, hey, Greg, I have a sense, so let's, you know, get it right, but like, I do have a sense here, so, um, oh. so yeah, it looks like Matt Scott's on to the finals uh, against either Jared or Joe. Um, um, I mean that's... his his light was such a beating for Barry that it was gonna be too, it was gonna be tough for Barry to get back. Yeah. So, um, it's going to be OA against AOBS either way. Right. That's, I think, good for for OA. 
I mean, I don't remember the old world's 2016 and 2015 metas, or 2017 <laughs> meta, whatever it was, where Agents was really good. I didn't play at the time, that's all I remember, so... Yeah, it's it's been a bit since both Agents and OA were equal levels of good at the same right. time. Uh, yeah. Like, there was the worlds where Agents was insane. Right, right, that's but, the one I was talking about. And then, we, was and then we went through a period where OA was insane, and the Agents was, like, not very good. Right. So... I haven't I haven't seen the mix of both. Um, well, especially when they've been reduced back down to. Yeah, and then honestly, I actually kind of like the CCT deck against. Uh, I kind of like the CCT deck um, against Communing. Right. I don't know. Well, uh, scum against profit is always weird. It depends. So. It depends on. Communing to like which version it is. I don't. I haven't looked at any of this. I, he's on the. He's on. Um. um He's on Qui Gon. Qui Gon. Okay, I know Matt's playing a bunch of disarm, so that helps. Um, and then, uh, I mean, oh, I forgot about the plus three from Despair. Yeah, yeah that, I did too. Mm, yep, I, I saw that. So maybe we should just have Silver Glenn come over here. We should just fly him <laughs> to the state so he can come over <laughs> here. And... Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, we know. So we'll, I mean, we'll, the hand comes across. It's a <laughs> and then they pack up their cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah, no, we should just uh, yeah, bring we'll, Justin over to... Matt. And... No, no, no. Silver Glenn to come over oh, and yeah. <laughs> talk to us and do commentary yeah. for us. He obviously knows the cards and what they do, so... Yep. We'll bring Matt in to, uh, to do an interview here Yep, with us. here comes Matt. Um, we gotta switch off of this mic, right? Uh, yes. Well, no, we're gonna just add a... We're just gonna... Give him one of the headsets. So, okay. Do you wanna, do you yeah, do I'll do it since right. we're teammates. It'll be fun. <laughs> so, here comes Matt Scott. My uh, roommate for the weekend. Here we are. Congratulations, sir. Thanks for uh, having me. Appreciate one, it. One win away. Very proud of you. I know. I know from over the years, B. Fred has talked you up for so long, uh, and I've, <laughs> I, I've, I've been on the train that you've been playing well. I've had you, you've come down to many worlds once or twice, and twice, yeah, yeah been there and, twice. and you know, I've watched you play, and so I know you're pr really solid player. Uh, the fans back home may not know you as well, but Fair you enough. know, this is this is a well deserved victory for you and well earned. Um, how do you feel going into the finals? Well, I'm sure it'll be tough, no matter who I'm playing against. Obviously, two guys who had a lot of success. Right. Two guys who are on top of their game, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, hey, I beat them both yesterday, so I can do it again. But yeah. still a long way to go, that's for right. sure. Well, in different decks this time. Uh, right. Whole new ball game. Right. And, uh, you know, and one's a former world champion and the other's an advocate. You can't let either you can't have we can't have a back-to-back -back world champion and you know we can't have an advocate win a world championship so we're kind of counting on you here to take this home well i'm certainly gonna do my best um how do you feel that one went like i mean the the first round the first game obviously was in your favor pretty huge i thought right definitely a matchup that i'm liking there against the tto it's always nice when you know they can only really operate effectively in one theater right you know take some of that pressure off on the ground so right makes it easier a little less pressure less stress right and it may and it was a good call i think to do that one first just to know what you had to lose by in the matchup that we i think after our testing this weekend we've determined is more in yavin 4's favor than cct uh, certainly possible i think it can go either way and it yeah. depends on obviously what what your exact setup is and how the game plays out, but right. you know he got a nice start in the last game with Luke in the opening hand, right? So that that helped get him going nicely, and right. of course he didn't fail any of his liberations. What's up with that? Yeah, yeah, no, no, we only did those in the Teletus games. <laughs> Brian Fred only fails his liberations. Uh, By drawing King Kian, just inconsequentially, is the only guy in my hand I can match up to flip my objective on. That. Are we interviewing me or Brian Fred? Yeah, wow. yeah. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, it's always about him. Yeah. Uh, did you take out the Java Space Cruiser out of the CCT? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we uh, had Java Space Cruiser yesterday, did not have the Slave one. Right. Made that switch. Right. Thought maybe just make things a little easier, always have a ship, have plenty of guys to throw on it whenever you need right. it. So, you know, right. And it I mean, was a good choice. Space Cruiser does that as well. It was just you get to start with Slave one in your hand now with the uh, any methods necessary yep. and everything. So that, that helps. It's just... When I was watching you play, I th I thought that one turn where you went to space, you kind of went a little bit light, 
And if he had X-Wing cannons there, he could have really gotten a blowout on the Ellis and then kind of beat down the Slave 1. Yeah. I thought that was a little risky. Uh, what were your thoughts there? I had Thrawn on the Ellis. Right, so right. I'm good with the cannons. Oh, I thought you had Thrawn on the uh, Slave 1. Did I? Oh, yeah, yeah. okay, sorry. I yeah, know, yeah. Now I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I mean, I know there's a risk there, but he, he's so low on force. That's the one thing about the Yavin 4 ops. Right. It's paying to drain, paying to retrieve, paying to shuffle guys around. So... He's, he does. He really didn't draw very many cards throughout the entirety of the right. game. So I know I have to look at it and say, hey, he's not going to have it all. Right? right. He can't have everything. So that's on one of my flaws at times. I sometimes see monsters under the bed. So I tried not to do that and just made what I thought was the smart play. Right. And I, I think that... that um, there we go. I'll switch it to the bigger screen so you can see us instead of staring at a blank game tail. <laughs> you know, professional streaming at its best. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you feel a little pressure to make the move that turn? Because that's what I kind of thought. Like you were getting hit for three and three, yeah. which is too rough to continue to take. So yeah. I thought you might have felt a little bit of pressure to make the move then and, and look at it and go, yeah, it's worth this risk. Definitely. It's a calculated risk. But I, I could have tried to wait one more turn. But then, as you said, I'm, I'm peeling three more cards. And he's reinforcing, right. certainly at least potentially. So who knows what's going to happen there. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I, I went for it there. and. Did you pause to think about a battle? Because I, I, we, we saw you kind of pause, and I was like, he better not be thinking the battle here. <laughs> um, I just wanted to make sure I had all my bases covered. Okay, okay. Just but, making sure, because it, no, it looked like it, and we are going, uh... Yeah, I think let, letting letting him dictate what he wanted to do was the right play there. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Well, and I think you're just trying to hang around and block a drain and right. save some damage and just be able to cause more than he can to get him under that threshold quicker. So. Absolutely. If that battle doesn't go spectacularly, I'm a little light up there on his turn. So right. that's definitely not good. So, yeah, yeah you're definitely right. It was, it was definitely not the play to battle there. Right, yeah. And, I mean, him not. I think him not going to the third system, did he lose that early? We he, were... I mean, he had ample opportunity to pull it, mm -hmm. and he. I think he chose not to intentionally because he was trying to stack, stack up at two, two systems, right. so I had nowhere to go. And I think that makes more sense when you get the uh, Gray Squadron 1 guy out to add one to the drain, so sure. it's a 3 and 3. Right, he knows he's always draining for 3. Right, and yeah, that, that dealing 6 to CCT can bring it quickly down. I mean, yeah. Um, and he has it could be worse. Projection, of course. Right. And probably, you know, the good thing was, like, since I won the first game by 23, I don't have to worry about the Weird Doom loop. Right, right. I believe he had as well with his right. 3PO, because obviously if he gets that low, I've, I've won already. So right. that was a nice thing to not have to worry about. Right, right, yeah. Um, did you um, did you have Search and Destroy for a while, or did you just find it that turn you deployed it? Uh, no, that was the first turn I found. Okay, yeah, because yeah, we were wondering if you were able to find it. I assume when you looked in your, your deck one turn... And then you just started paying to drain and do a bunch of stuff. You, it was it not. Was not it, it was no. yeah. So you were just like, all right, it, I'll use all this force because there's nothing else to use for here. Exactly. Trying destroy. to piece yeah. together some space until I find that search and destroy. That's obviously what I'm prioritizing. Anything that's good in space and the search and destroy. Yeah. You've already been invited back to Atlanta. So. <laughs> Um, Still Brian all Fred, about Brian Fred. Yeah, Brian Fred can't let Matt Scott enjoy his spotlight for being one of the top two players in the world this year. Put the camera on you. Yeah, so, all right, well, I think we'll let you go to do your team talk, so appreciate good luck it. in the you. next round. Uh, congratulations on this fire. I, mean, I appreciate it. Um, I know. know. Come a long way. It'll be tough, but it'll yeah. be fun. I mean, as much as I was disappointed losing to you, I was super happy it was at least to you and not to somebody else because I really, I mean, if I couldn't win, having the guy that should have been, you know, literally next door in my room sure. should have been the one to get there, so. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, man. Good luck. Thank you. See you. Thanks, everybody. Well, yep, we'll see you next round. Um, so we will probably be taking a break while the Joe and Jared match comes up. Uh, Dan will probably be uh, giving updates. Um, I've got a sandwich to go eat, so if somebody wants to come jump on there, they're more than likely to, or more than welcome to come jump on. Uh, anyways, we should be back in a little bit.